Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our guest is a returning guest, Dr. Jacqueline Nicholas. And we're going to talk today about a survey of more than 800 people living with MS and their support partners. We're going to talk about some of the things that they want to do on a daily basis that they are challenged with. Welcome back to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Nicholas. Thanks for having me today. Right. Uh, for those uh, listening that aren't familiar with you when you're here before, give us just a bit of background about yourself. So I am a neurologist and I'm fellowship trained in multiple sclerosis and neuroimmunology. And I work at the Ohio Health MS Center in Columbus, Ohio, where we care for over 4,000 patients and their families living with MS. Tell our listeners what MS actually is. So MS is a disease that affects the brain and the spinal cord, and it's actually an autoimmune disease. And there are lots of those types of conditions, but it, autoimmune really means that someone's own immune system is attacking their own body. And our immune system really is in place to try to protect us from foreign invaders like bacteria and viruses. But in MS, uh, something goes awry, and our white blood cells actually begin to think that the surface of our neurons in the brain and the spinal cord, which is called myelin, uh, is foreign. And so it begins attacking it. And unfortunately, uh, this can be devastating in people with MS because it can uh, sometimes uh, cause a very serious uh, effects uh, in terms of physical and cognitive disability. Uh, people can have a number of symptoms ranging from fatigue and cognitive impairment, memory impairment, to difficulty walking and balancing, uh, difficulty with urination and having bowel movements. Uh, so there, there are many different symptoms and everybody's MS is different, but it actually is a very important disease to talk about because one in every 750 people in the United States is affected by it. And it's actually the leading cause of non-traumatic disability in young adults. And not only is the patient affected by it, the caregivers and family members as well, yeah? Incredibly. So when someone is diagnosed with MS, this the effects of it goes far beyond uh, the individual. It's their, their family who is coping with it and trying to help the patient cope with it, and their children and their friends and their coworkers. And uh, so, you know, it really, it affects the whole village of the MS patient. And um, it's important that we help to educate not only the person who's newly diagnosed, but also the family and to support the family as well. In that uh, effort to bring awareness, there was a, a survey, a national survey of people that um, are living with multiple sclerosis. And I guess the, the survey was basically asking if you had one day to experience life without any MS symptoms, what would you do with that day? And I think some of the answers may be surprising to our listeners. Talk about this survey. So this survey was organized by Genentech, uh, where they actually uh, reached out and surveyed uh, nationally about 800 individuals living with MS, as well as their care partners. And uh, it was very helpful to gain information on the unpredictability of MS symptoms and how this affects people and their partners living with MS in everyday life. And uh, with the results of the survey, it actually showed that uh, approximately 80% of these individuals wished for relatively simple things like help with everyday chores or running errands. Um, yet. Many of these people had never reached out or even known about existing services that were available to actually help, um, either through resources or advocacy organizations. And they also felt like there was it was difficult to find these types of resources. And so uh, individuals mentioned that they, they wish there was some type of central location to help with finding uh, emotional support. Um, work, life planning, and just uh, connecting to other people with MS. Now, to that end, what has Genetech, uh, in, in addition to the survey, what steps uh, are being made? So it, it's really exciting. Uh, based on that survey, that has really helped to inform a new platform that will be available online to individuals with MS and their families mm -hmm. Uh, to actually locate these resources. And so this is uh, going out uh, in uh, different cities where uh, an individual can actually log on to the platform called gatherms.com. 
and they can uh, look under community support. Um, what are the events happening locally to learn more about MS awareness? They can locate emotional support resources, counseling, health and wellness, um, stress management, nutrition, you name it. And the, this is gonna be a place where people can go and click and find what resources are located in my city and are close to me. And it's very easy to use uh, because it's online and it's open to anyone. Um, there's no requirements to be able to access the site. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think this is really exciting because right now there is not something where all of these resources exist for people with MS to make it easier for them. Does this platform also identify some of the problems that caregivers have when they're dealing with someone uh, with MS, not necessarily a family member, but someone who may be hired? Um, I know training goes on when you're a caregiver, but having to raise awareness about something as prominent as MS, there are still some gaps in knowledge and education when it comes to giving care to these folks. Exactly. And so, you know, I think the biggest challenge is, is that their care partners or support partners, um, you know, they, they mentioned in the survey that it, with the unpredictable MS symptoms, they've had to limit social commitments and miss work days. And because, you know, there were no resources or they weren't uh, aware of them uh, to be able to set in place to help uh, their uh, family member or loved one when they're away. And so that's been a major impact on care partners. And so the nice, uh, the really nice thing about this uh, platform is that they can uh, learn about different support services um, to help while they're away. Now, when you're living with a, a disease such as MS, uh, you're dealing with uh, payers, you're dealing with insurance companies, you're dealing with home health care. Is there ever any cost involved to the patient or the person who's wanting to get more information when they're dealing with GatherMS.com? So it's free of charge. Uh, they can log on online and there's no cost to use the platform. And uh, what role do you see as a clinician that GatherMS is going to play uh, in the future as far as MS and as far as some of the advances that will develop, I'm sure, with uh, more MS research? Well, I think in the future, you know, patients uh, need to be able to access this information from where they are. Uh, everything is moving to a more digital online platform. More and more of our uh, patients and their families are getting information from online resources. And so I think this is just a, a new resource where it's actually accumulated all the resources that individuals may need locally. And so they can use this to better navigate their lives and uh, deal with some of the, you know, the disabilities that they have and being able to get things done and just not, um, you know, be forced to waste energy on, you know, cleaning their house or being fearful that there are no resources to help support them getting their tests uh, financially, you know, through this website, I think that it allows that information to be more transparent and for uh, patients and their families to realize that there are organizations out there to help them outside of the major MS organizations that they may already be aware of. Mm -hmm. And so I think in the future, this will, um, this will be a great resource just because it's not a still national website, but it's actually getting to people where they need it, which is close to home. Right. Okay. So you've been newly diagnosed. You're young in your uh, MS journey. And you can go to gatherms.com, get some great information and support. But what about the folks who've been living with MS for a while? They've got a certain mindset about what can and can't be done concerning how the disease affects them. Are there any resources at Gather MS to maybe change the mindset or offer a little bit of hope where maybe some hope didn't exist in some of us older folks? Well, I think that's a great point. There are certainly individuals who've been diagnosed with MS years and years ago when there was not as much available as far as um, resources and treatment and symptom management. And so it's exciting that this platform, I think, may bring some of those people back into the, the community of MS care. Um, by, you know, going to this website, they certainly can see the community support resources of both national and local organizations and programs that are available to them, and also through the events section. Um, you know, the events has a listing of different uh, MS events and educational programs 
available. And so that may be something that they haven't been aware of because maybe they felt like there was nothing that could be done. And so they kind of disappeared from the clinic setting. And so I think, uh, you know, the digital platform certainly will be most applicable to individuals who are uh, younger and using that. But I do think that that it also has, uh, you know, usability for individuals of all ages with MS. And the website again is www.gathermsdotcom. Correct. Correct. Great. Well, I'm glad that you could come back and uh, lend us some more of your time, Doctor Nicholas. Oh, thanks so much for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in studio with Doctor Jacqueline Nicholas, and we've been talking about gathermsdotcom. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can listen in and download at SoundCloud.